Mr. Beat presents Presidential, presidential Elections in American, American History. <laughs> the fourth presidential election in American history was held from Friday, October 31st to Wednesday, December 3rd, 1800. It was a significant election. In fact, some call it the, quote, Revolution of 1800 due to the political realignment it created. It was essentially a rematch between incumbent President John Adams and his off-and-on friend-slash-enemy Vice President Thomas Jefferson. In 1800, Adams and Jefferson were far from friends. The two had spent the previous four years awkwardly working side-by-side side as president and vice president, but now they seemed to hate each other. Their campaigns were just plain nasty. Jefferson supporters said President Adams had a, quote, hideous hermaphroditical character, which has neither the force and firmness of a man, nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman. Adams supporters responded by calling Vice President Jefferson, quote, a mean-spirited son of a half-breed Indian squaw sired by a Virginia mulatto father. Federalists called Jefferson a bad Christian who had too much sympathy for the French Revolution, while Democratic Republicans said that Adams was giving too much power to the federal government, talking trash about his signing of the Alien and Sedition Acts and his expansion of the military. With this election, political parties officially chose running mates for Adams and Jefferson, hoping they each would be elected the vice president, therefore avoiding another embarrassing result like the one after the election of 1796, where two dudes with opposite views were in the executive branch together. The Federalists chose Charles Coatsworth Pinckney as Adams' running mate, and the Democratic Republicans chose Aaron Burr. Remember, under the original Electoral College, each elector could vote for two people for president. The top two candidates would be president and vice president. And here are the results. First of all, it's important to note that the results were heavily disputed. However, Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr both received 73 electoral votes, ensuring the Democratic-Republican victory. One of the Democratic-Republican electors was supposed to not vote for Burr, but he did anyway. So with Jefferson and Burr tied, the House of Representatives had to choose one of them to become president. Partially due to the always influential Alexander Hamilton, the still mostly Federalist House went with Jefferson. Jefferson became the third president and Aaron Burr became the third vice president in American history. John Adams became the first one-term president when he received 65 electoral votes. The Federalists planned a bit better by giving 64 electoral votes to Charles Coatsworth Pinckney and one electoral vote to John Jay. This election was significant because it was the first peaceful transition of political power between opposing parties in American history. It was also a turning point. It marked the beginning of a generation of Democratic-Republican Party rule and the decline of the Federalist Party, who would never again have a president president in office. The result of this election was affected by the Three-Fifths Compromise. Had slaves not been counted for purposes of congressional apportionment, Adams would have beat Jefferson. However, Jefferson still would have won the popular vote. I'll see you for the next election, buddy.